energy so clean, you can drink it. And that's why I'm here, to look at the most successful energy transition in the world. My name is Scott Tinker, and I study energy. And I was headed to the Avanger Hydro Plant. So the easiest access to the power plant was to tunnel through the mountain? Yes, I guess not the easiest, <laughs> but uh, the best altogether, yeah. The tunnel is how long? 1,500 meters long. How far under the mountain are we now? We are 500 meters. When the tunnel stopped, I realized we weren't going through the mountain. The power plant is inside the mountain. There's nobody here. No, there <laughs> normally is nobody here. All our stations are run from our central in Bergen. Wow. I'm very curious about this. What's on the wall here? It's a piece of art, a waterfall. With a settlement on the right, you're jumping up the waterfall. So, there's art down here in this plant. Yes. That's beautiful. It looks like the end of a cathedral. Yeah. And this is an interesting design. I mean, what, what is that? So this is constructed to transform the energy of the water into rotating energy in the wheel. It was an American gold digger, digging gold, which discovered that he could use the energy in the water much more efficiently. If you had a cup form, so you, you get to use over 90% of the energy in the water. What you see is the top of that generator. What are the rotations? 500 revolutions per minute. 500 RPM. Yeah. It's 200 tons per minute. These generators are connected to lakes in the mountains high above us by a 20-mile underground pipeline network. No huge dams, and the environmental footprint is tiny. With technology like this, Norway now gets 99% of its power from water. Lots and lots of water. So it's, it's cooking by the time yeah. it gets here. Oh, wow. How fast? 5,000 gallons a minute? Yes, yeah. between four and five thousand gallons per second. Per second. <laughs> it took Norway 70 years to turn this nearly perfect energy source into a nearly perfect electricity system. And what I'm trying to find out is what will the energy transition look like? for the rest of us. And how long will it really take to make the switch? By training, I'm a geologist. I run the Bureau of Economic Geology. Critter. You can even pick out the trail when you get up here and look pretty close. I'm also a professor at the University of Texas. Being in the field is the best part of being a geologist. This black is actually a hydrogen to carbon ratio. I speak around the world to governments and industry and at universities, trying to build a common understanding of energy. That's my passion. And the bottom are actual units. But my background is mostly technical. I realized that if I was going to figure out our energy transition, I had to experience it. I needed to see how energy is made, from coal to solar and everything in between. It was time to get out of the lab and back into the field. While I was packing for my trip, I had an idea. I decided to add up all the energy that goes into everything in my life. Like all the clothes. Most of them are made in a factory, then shipped around the world to my closet. Then I ship them around with me. That's a lot of energy. Add to that the energy to run 
and to make the dozens of gadgets that I use every day. Then add the energy to build and power everything in our house. The appliances, furniture, the house itself, everything. Add on the energy to run my car and to build my share of the roads. And to heat and cool my share of every building I go into, like the airport. If you add up the total energy that one person uses in a year, it comes to a gigantic number. 20 million watt hours. But the energy unit I would use is me, or you. One person's total energy footprint in a year. And as I travel the world looking at electricity and transportation, that's how I'll measure every energy source I visit, by the number of people it would power in a year.